have main engine start. Three, two, one. We have SRB ignition and we have liftoff. Liftoff of mission 41D, the first flight of the orbiter Discovery, and the shuttle has cleared the tower. Over the last quarter century, Space Shuttle Discovery, possibly the most historic vehicle in NASA's shuttle fleet, has been the most flown spacecraft in human history. NASA is preparing for the final scheduled flight of Discovery, a trip to the International Space Station that marks the anniversary of a decade of continuous human presence aboard the orbiting outpost. This historic flight will include the delivery of the last room to be attached to the U.S. segment of the complex, as well as the first humanoid robot in space. When Discovery launches on NASA's 35th mission to the ISS, the STS-133 crew of six astronauts will begin an 11-day mission to deliver one of the shuttle's last loads of spare parts for the orbiting outpost. This flight will deliver the Express Logistics Carrier 4, the Leonardo Permanent Multipurpose Module full of supplies for the ISS, and also Robonaut 2, a novel component that will reside in the Destiny Laboratory. During two scheduled spacewalks, the shuttle crew will work through a variety of tasks, including some resulting from the replacement of a failed pump on the ISS. We're all experienced, we've all flown in space before, and the three of us, uh, Mike, Nicole, and Tim, have done long duration flights on space station, so they're intimately familiar with space station. Retired Air Force Colonel Steve Lindsay is the commander of Discovery's crew of six astronauts. A veteran of four space flights, he last commanded STS-121, also flown aboard Discovery. The pilot of Discovery is Air Force Colonel Eric Bowe. He will be at the controls as Discovery undocks from the station for its farewell lap around the complex. He first flew on orbit as the pilot of STS-126 in 2008. Air Force Colonel Alvin Drew is Mission Specialist 1. He first rode uphill on STS-118 in 2007. He will perform two spacewalks during STS-133. Mission Specialist 2 is Army Colonel Tim Copra. A former ISS resident, he lived and worked on the station for two months during Expedition 20. He will conduct two spacewalks on this shuttle flight. Dr. Mike Barrett, Mission Specialist 3, is a NASA flight surgeon who became an astronaut. This is his second voyage to the ISS after flying aboard the station for over six months during Expeditions 19 and 20. Mission Specialist 4 is Nicole Stott, launching for the second time on Discovery. He served as an ISS flight engineer for three months during Expeditions 20 and 21. The key objectives for STS-133 are uh, primarily uh, positioning the station for uh, the future years to come, both inside and outside. We have supplies that we're bringing for the crew to live and work uh, continuously for the next few years uh, inside the station, as well as some large uh, spares or replacement units that we'll put on the outside of the station. The first of two components that Discovery's crew will attach to the station is the ELC-4 pallet, the Express Logistics Carrier 4. One item stored on the ELC is a spare ammonia radiator. The radiator helps reject heat from all the electrical boxes on the outside of the ISS. Eric and Al will be back on the shuttle working the shuttle robotic arm. And with the station arm, Tim and I are going to pull the ELC out of the payload bay. 
and then we'll position it so that the shuttle robotic arm can grab it. Then Copra and Stott will reposition the station arm, grapple the ELC again, and attach the pallet to the S3 truss on the station's nader side. In our payload bay, we have a, uh, a PMM, which is, uh, stands for Permanent Multipurpose Module. It's essentially an MPLM, which is the uh, a pressurized cargo carrier that we've been using on space station for several years to haul logistics up and down. Copra and Barrett will grapple the Leonardo PMM, the last component that will be attached to the station's U.S. segment, and they will install it on the nader side of Node 1 Unity. Not only will it be full of supplies for the space station, it, could, it will also serve in the future as a closet for space station for stowage, which is something that, that they always need up on space station. Also flying inside the PMM is a virtual ISS crew member named Robonaut 2. R2 is the first dexterous humanoid robot in space and the first U.S.-built robot at the space station. R2 will be deployed on a fixed pedestal inside the Destiny Lab. The Robonaut project is designed to ultimately function as the equivalent of a spacewalking astronaut, accomplishing tasks that could be unsafe for a human. Robonaut is, is very impressive to me. As a medical doctor, I was able to look at it, shake hands with it. One of the first things I noted was that the uh, control actuators and the fingers are very, very alike to um, the tendons in a human hand and they can vary the sensitivity in the grip on this, just like a human would do when it's doing different, different tasks. We're looking for those areas where we can kind of build on the strengths of the machine and also the strengths of the humans and, and, and look for that synergy where we can uh, get the most out of, uh, to, to achieve the mission. During STS-133, Drew and Copra will open the hatch for two scheduled spacewalks. The objective of those spacewalks is really to get lots of tasks completed so that once the shuttle retires, we're in the best possible situation for maintaining the International Space Station. For the spacewalks themselves, we're doing several tasks uh, of outfitting the space station, um, doing some what we call cats and dogs cleanup work. Uh, uh, take care of some um, insulation issues, working on some various components that need to be doing. On EVA-1, Drew and Copra are scheduled to install a 10-foot long cable between the Quest airlock and the Destiny lab. They will also relocate the station's failed ammonia coolant pump module to ESP-2, the external stowage platform 2. Our first spacewalk that we're going to do is going to be cleaning up from the last spacewalk that our space station crew members did. Several months ago, we had a ammonia pump uh, for our cooling system uh, fail on board the space station, and we need to go and replace it. So we will start right off uh, with going out to pick up that failed uh, pump and putting it back in the storage location for the replacement pump. On EVA-2, after the Leonardo PMM has been installed to station, Drew and Copra are scheduled to perform tasks carried over from STS-131. They will install a camera light on and remove an insulation blanket from the special purpose dexterous manipulator, the Dexter robot hand. They will also remove the lightweight adapter plate assembly from the Columbus lab for the return home. The space business is a team sport. I think uh, all of us feel pretty humbled to be part of any space shuttle or space station mission because there's so much work that is done to make this happen and uh, all of us are very, very thankful for their hard work. When I think about Discovery, I think about my time at KSC and it was the first vehicle I got to work on there. It means so much because I think it's more than just a job to people in the space program. What I've seen on the shuttle and the station programs is the people working it, it's, it's, it's a heart and soul thing. Everybody is just maintaining an incredibly high, if not higher, standard of professionalism uh, to keep this program running. So we, we have nothing but admiration and gratitude for what these people do.